The key here is once you get it parted down the center, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the front and back. Welcome to this video, guys. Today, we're gonna cut the Firefly haircut. So we comb back the mannequin straight back. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna figure out where I wanna part this. For me today, I wanna do a, just a classic balanced haircut. So uh, I'm gonna go straight down the center. So I find the bridge of the nose, comb the hair back, and I just go back to that kind of top of the crown, apex area of the head. So I go to the apex point of the head right before it starts to curve down. Obviously, got the crown area here. So I split that center parting. Then the key here is once you get it parted down the center, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna separate the front and back. Now that doesn't mean go to the middle of the head and separate it there. It means I wanna find the density. So when I section from front to back, I look at where the hairline drops down. So right here, comb the hair over. So you can see the hairline here. I follow that up to the apex. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna separate the fact that I've got this much density in the back of the head all the way through. And then I've got this much density from the side all the way to the front. So basically in most haircuts, I wanna be aware of that density as I'm cutting so that I make sure that when I'm thinking about my elevations and how the hair is gonna to fall together, I know that it's all gonna fall pretty similar because the density is the same. You can see straight line up to the apex. Now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So now we basically separated front and back and I'm going to twist up and clip this back away because we're gonna cut that later. Now I'm gonna clean up the left-hand side Now, we're gonna start this haircut on the right-hand side, working our way back. All right, so we'll start off by combing everything forward. Actually, I'm gonna comb it back. Changing my mind. So I comb the hair back, it's like this, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a horizontal line straight back, comb the rest back off the face because Here's kind of my goal as I go through and I'm cutting hair. I always wanna make sure that I'm prepared for my next section. So it's a lot of times like, I think anybody that's successful in anything that they do, they're always thinking about the next step. So I'm not just processing this step, I'm thinking about the next steps and how I'm working through it. I comb the hair back, but then I keep this hair comb back and I slide the clip up underneath. So it's ready to go as soon as I get done cutting this section. Now, I hold this hair in my hand and I'm going to go through, and you just gotta determine the length that you wanna cut. Now, this is gonna be worn back off of the face. It kinda has a flow off the face. So, it really doesn't matter what length you decide to cut it. Obviously, you just need to cut it nice and short. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go cheekbone here. I think that's a good reference point for me. And I'm gonna go light or wide teeth of the comb. So now I'll come through and I'll grab pretty much at this point, some of the old hair, but I wanna make sure when we look at the head shape here, if I'm holding the hair like this, it's coming at about 45 degrees off the head, right? As the head starts to move and I start taking sections from further and further away, that angle becomes deeper and deeper, which is going to build up more and more weight. So you really have to determine how much weight do you want to build up in this haircut. So I'll start and my goal is to kind of shoot for that 45 degree angle off the head shape. Now, another thing to be aware and how you can kind of see this, even in the pictures, like the classic pictures of this haircut, it gets a little heavier into the front a little bit. 
Um, when it's pulled off the face, it's not really, but it, it stays pretty balanced. But if it was combed down, when you see people try to modernize it, it tends to have a really kind of harsh line forward. So what's happening and why that happens is because as I'm moving, not only am I moving up on the head shape, so my angle gets heavier, so the graduation gets heavier, our elevation is lower, but the hairline starts to move forward. So when you have the hairline going from where I'm holding it and everything's down to now shifting and going up the head and being uh, beginning to be here, that creates over direction. Over direction is gonna create weight into the front of the head shape. So you just have to be aware of that as well. It's okay to have that, but just be aware of it. And I'm just gonna be a little bit lighter go you can see sort of how it flows back off of the face now we're going to continue that into the back of the hair and then we're going to do the opposite side so now i go from cutting a horizontal to then following the parting right following the head shape back Here's a little tip too. If you wanna be sure that you're at the right elevation, as you're holding the hair, if I'm exactly where I should be, I should see a solid line. If I elevate it slightly, I'll see a more shattered line in my guide. And then if I'm way out of whack, I won't see a guide at all. Same thing, just following that line, guys. The hardest part is staying consistent working around the head shape, but if you have consistent partings, that allows you to just kind of follow the parting all the way around. Here's the other thing I, I like to do is once I get to this point, I'm gonna do a little cross check. I'll go through and because I did diagonal back partings, now I'll go diagonal forward and just do a little checking of my shape and just kind of dust the ends. Like it all looks good. Now key here is to make sure that you don't over direct one way or the other. It needs to come straight out from the head. We cut this with the round. So that means that there's no over direction in the horizontal line everything's straight out. The vertical line is where we had our movement. So you just need to make sure you take really clean diagonal forward partings. You'll get a really clean and make sure you don't bring any other hair into it. As you can see, nice flow back to the haircut. So why was it so important to have a guideline based on the bone structure of the face for the initial cut? The initial start of the cut was at that cheekbone area. So I wanna do the same thing. 
so that I'm pretty balanced on both sides. Now, is everybody's face balanced? Not really, um, but when you balance a haircut on facial features, it really helps with it to appear balanced. And now I'm not gonna continue into the back until afterwards and I'll connect these two points because my goal is to create this horizontal line all the way up to the top, then create my diagonal back line. I don't wanna jump into, you could create a horizontal, then go right diagonal back and then continue through. That's just a lot more thought that has to go into that. See how that guide is more solid underneath? And if I elevate up, now look at the guide underneath. See how it's more broken? And as I drop down, it gets more solid. If it's a perfectly solid line, I don't wanna cut it there. Only because I'm not trying to build a one length line. I wanna recomb and just slightly lift so it looks a little broken, but not too broken. And that's when I cut. And that's a great uh, tip for the fact that then you don't really need to know, like I'm not worried that the head is super tilted right now. It doesn't really matter because I know my elevation based on what my guide looks like, not based on how the head is at this moment. Now comb this hair back, and we're just gonna work diagonal back partings to connect the two sides now, this length and the back corner length here. And that will tie everything together in this haircut. All right, so let's connect these two points through into the back. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna blow her dry and then we're gonna do a little bit of dry detail work. Paul Mitchell Sculpting Foam, one of my favorite products. All right, so now the dry detail work that we're gonna do throughout is I really just wanna see kind of how this shape is. And for me, I've just got a little bit of heaviness in this back portion here. So what I wanna do is I wanna soften that up a little bit. So right here, this is where my heaviest point is in the back. And then right here, I'm just gonna take a horizontal line now, or a horizontal section, I don't wanna cut this point off in the back. The point came from crisscrossing, but I can be aware of that and still kind of elevate this section up a little bit and just point cut and soften into it. And just assess the shape. 
I just wanna see how the hair is falling. If it's falling heavy in any point, this would be the heaviest part right here. So now I'll just go vertical and I'm just gonna point cut right into the tip of this. Now the goal is just to make sure that your line never goes away. So when you point cut into it, try to point cut vertically into your uh, subsection that you're taking. And then that way you don't have to worry about erasing any of your lines. Now I'm gonna go around this edge and just clean it up using a little bit of point cutting. 